And we started working with entrepreneurs in Haiti. And I started learning some things about Haiti that were like really, really intense. And things that I didn't necessarily know. And I didn't know until I really started to work there. I'd always known something. The average life expectancy, for example, is, is 80 years. Or 60 years, pardon me. 60 years. All right, so put that in perspective. In the U.S., it's about 82 or 83 on average, right? That 80% of the people in Haiti at this point in time live in what, we, what the U.N. would define poverty and 54% at what would, they would define as abject poverty. Now, that's not anything to, like, to say, yeah, you just feel bad about that or feel this or feel that, but like, shit, when you... If you study the history of Haiti and you study the history, the implications or the, the role that the United States and other Western nations, in particular France, have for creating Haiti, it's a different kind of, you feel a different kind of way about this. And so let me give you an example, right? This is where you cannot understand the present if you don't understand the history. So, like, you couldn't understand who you are if you didn't understand your history. You couldn't understand your family if you don't understand your family's history. You can't understand Haiti if you don't understand Haiti's history. So, you know, Haiti was one of the most profitable colonies of the Western nations of all the colonies. And, you know, it produced half the sugar in the world and a third of the coffee in the world, two-thirds of the coffee. And Haiti was fundamentally a slave port. 500,000 Africans were taken to Haiti to earn all of this immense wealth for the Western world. One, the single most profitable colony was in Haiti. So, all, so you imagine, so this is the, this kind of mind, and this is how it keeps going. It's not just the thing of the past. It's the thing that holds today. You take this idea, like who has this idea, right? What, what we need, we have all this land in Haiti. Now we've sort of conquered it. We've, we've killed the, the, the local population. They've died off. Either we've killed them or they've died off from diseases. So we need labor. So we're going to go to Africa. We're going to get labor. We're going to bring people over to the tune of 500,000 over time. And they're going to work for us. And their average life, five to six years, was the average life expectancy of a slave in Haiti. Imagine just working people to death and all of those profits going to Europe. So like, you know, um, you know, you walk down the streets in Paris and you see all these amazing buildings. You see these monuments and you see these, it's just, it's just fabulous knowing that all of this stuff, so much of it is built from the labor of the slaves. It's like, it's just, the, it's almost incomprehensible. And then in, in 1804, so there's an uprising in Haiti. The black slaves in Haiti did what the American colonists did here. The American colonists were being exploited and overtaxed and abused and so on by the British. And so the American colonists overthrew the British and established the United States of America. And the Haitian slaves did the same thing. Awesome. Imagine if you had like a if you saw a land of slaves and they were being brutalized, like their average life expectancy was five to six years, you'd be rooting for the slaves. Of course you would. You'd be rooting for that population. Just like you think, those of you who are Americans, you think about our history, oh, thank God we overthrew the British. Here, thank God they overthrew the French. But the world came together because the world said, hey, especially the United States, the United States said, we can't have the slaves in Haiti establishing their own country, the first black-led nation in the world. We can't have that because our slaves will think they can do the same thing. And so they, did, they boycotted, they completely cut off Haiti from the rest of the world and didn't allow these new nation owners 
to trade or do anything for the rest of the world. And we, in fact, just immiserated Haiti and forced them to pay reparations to the tune of about $150 million. And back then, $150 million is a lot of money, my friends. Basically, we ensured that Haiti would just stay poor forever. So see, like, you know, when you look at Haiti today, and if you're following the news, you would know that a lot of stuff was happening in Haiti. And just the past three weeks, and you think, wow, it's just this really poor country, a shithole country, as President Trump called it. And you don't study the history of Haiti and study, like, how things got there? You see, this is like why, for example, black people in the United States are always talking about slavery. And white people want to say, well, slavery's over. Why are you still talking about that? No, because if you don't understand the history, you don't understand where it's from. If you don't understand the history of slavery in the U.S., you don't understand why North Philly is as poor as North Philly is. You don't get that. You don't understand inner city Baltimore. You don't get that. You'll never understand that. You don't get Newark. You don't, none of it. You won't get it because it's all part of a history. And you won't get why all the white suburbs are as wealthy as they are. Because this is all part of a big move and a big chess game that people with power and money play. And so you wouldn't understand how Haiti got to be so poor. Anyway, what happens with us is we just started working there and we just continued to say, you know what, we're just going to do like a little bit of our work and we're going to make it happen. <laughs>